Hello there and welcome to Locked In Conversations. I'm Charlotte Gibson and today I'm joined by Fiona Partington, Digital Learning Specialist. Today we're going to be covering all things learning and development, how learning development is much more than just your compliance test, how the workplace has changed over the years and what this means for, for learning and development. Learning is important in whichever organisation you're in. You have to, you've got, there are different types of learning that are needed. There's compliance and more importantly, there are things like all the soft skills and people skills that are needed to engage people. Um, and what I think people miss is that it's right in front of them. The content is there. You've hired some really clever people to run your business. Uh, they know stuff and they can share stuff. So you can do really simple things like lunch and learn or gather content from different organizations like the CIPD to just pull together support for people in their different roles and obviously if you are a firm that delivers something in specific like law engineering there are all sorts of different um, specialist areas that you'll be able to draw content from and a lot of this stuff is free so as long as you've got somewhere to put stuff and someone who's really kind of taking responsibility for it as part of their role, then you can you can actually pull together some really useful and engaging content for your people. So when I think of learning programmes, and certainly the ones that I've been through, I think of my compliance test that I have to do every year. I think of um, very formal learning, perhaps in a in a classroom setting. Um, obviously, in the current climate that we're we're in, this structure, this learning structure, which we may have been used to for some time, has kind of all gone out the window. So how do you feel that COVID-19 has affected um, learning and development? What's happened is a lot of organisations have looked to learning as a place to go to get those resources. So historically they've looked at learning and development to those teams to deliver content and now they can see them as a team that can deliver a different type of contact and content and communication. And if you don't have the luxury of a comms team, then potentially learning is the best way to get out to your people. So seeing a lot of move to digital, seeing a lot of emphasis on well-being, on reassurance, on um, managing those very difficult conversations that some people are having to have when they're furloughing, and um, also kind of simply trying to use the tools that we're having to use, like Zoom, like now, um, in a much more proficient and effective way. In People Management, a recent survey said that 60% of businesses say that they've moved to digital, uh, made short uh, courses shorter um, to enable people to concentrate. Uh, they've moved, 6% of them have moved to virtual classrooms and there's a lot more video content out there. And a lot of people are saying that they might not move back. So that's quite an interesting point. Into the middle of the whole COVID thing was the piece around Black Lives Matter. And, a lot of organisations also add a diversity as part of their learning and development materials and uh, I think that's been quite disruptive and emotional in an already emotional situation and um, people have wondered, really had to kind of reflect on, on those issues and larger organisations particularly and certainly I know mine, they have handled it incredibly well but there's been a need to really inform to understand what the business's position is, that the businesses do have to take a position, and really understand what kind of organisation you're working for as a result of the statements they make around that stuff. I think one of the, the key points that you that you raised there, Fee, is you know, learning and development doesn't have to be, and, and really shouldn't be actually about you know, compliance necessarily, or of course that's mandatory and that's really important. Um, it is about making sure that your whole of workforce can bring their whole selves to work, that people are empathetic, that they listen and they understand and they take time to, to support each, each other within, within the workplace. And I think, um, you know, I, I really hope that this is something that isn't just a you know, flash in the pan that this is something that businesses continue to work on because you know, I think we've seen some 
positive sound, just with some positive starts, but really there is, you know, a lot more, a lot more work to be done. I've been in the working world uh, 40 years, so I mean, I, and it has changed hugely from that time. I mean, we've moved away from the job for life uh, career, which was measured more about, you know, I spent five years in this job and 20 years in another, through to this is what I do, this is what I am, this is what I can bring. And, and I think we've moved to what people now call a portfolio career, which I think is, is Brilliant. And I think now what we're looking at is much more around the skills um, that people bring and very particularly things around adaptability, flexibility in this environment, resilience, um, being a rounded person. Uh, interviews a lot now are around, um, you know, having a, being a good fit for the organisation. So the cultural aspect of it being really, really important. And I think what that's doing in terms of learning and development is that they are, we're looking much more at um, people getting what they need at the time that they need it, just in time learning. And I know that this has been a, you know, a, an item that people have talked about forever, but actually it's much more relevant now. The disadvantage of moving away from a career for life or a long career with a particular organisation is that you don't get necessarily connected to the learning and development offered by that business. And that means that um, businesses who are offering things like zero hours contracts and um, not really feeling that they have that to create that sort of nurturing environment aren't doing it because they're seeing L&D as a cost. So somehow there needs to be an understanding that businesses need to take some responsibility for making sure that that L&D environment is there for people, that there is a nurturing environment and that they will take care of people. We're also seeing it in benefits, you know, we've seen recent cases where uh, people who have different types of contracts aren't getting the kind of benefits they need. So there is something uh, in the kind of world of HR that needs to catch up and at L&D that needs to catch up with what's happening out there in, in business, in the market, to enable those employees to feel secure and supported and developed. What do you think is next for digital learning and, and development? I think what, uh, what we've seen recently with COVID is that, um, and also with a kind of a millennial approach to people's career, is that they're looking for the right organisation to work for and they want to work for the right leader who has the right kind of values. And I think, uh, so there will be a lot of need for those sorts of developmental areas and we need to be able to support them in L&D so that people can demonstrate that they are the right people to work for. Um, I think we are going to be moving much more to just in time to set, you know, people need to take responsibility for their own learning as well. So maybe driving the skills around agility, research, and again, resilience, and I know it's a word that's become overused recently, but I, I do think we are seeing a great need for it. One of the biggest pushbacks that I hear from organisations around learning and development, particularly in their younger employees, is that there's no point investing in this particular course or this particular qualification, because all that will happen is that you upskill them and then they will leave. What are your um, personal feelings towards that Sort of type of approach and um, what would you suggest to those businesses who are worried about their sort of younger employees leaving once they are upskilled? Uh, two points there. I think, I think business needs to up its game in terms of accepting that that might happen but I think they also need to recognise that one of the known benefits of delivering L&D in an organisation is that it brings loyalty and engagement so they need to trust their employees. I think also they need to be a little bit generous. You know, if you do upskill somebody uh, and they go, there's probably another reason why they're going, so you potentially need to look at that. I think if, if people are going to have uh, long-term portfolio careers, then they will be gathering things into their basket of skills and they'll be looking to, uh, to build that sort of set of skills to, so that they're a broader, wider person to get, to get their career going. 
Um, if you're creating the environment for them to fill that basket, then they're going to stay because they're going to want to carry on developing themselves. So they need to think, they, have, they need to bring some fresh thinking to that. Um, I think that's some really, uh, really good advice. And I, I particularly like your point around if they do leave, there probably is another reason that they are leaving. Now, either they wanted to get a job out of college or out of university and they kind of fell into it and actually it's not fully suited to their skill sets or actually they're just not thriving in a way that they envisage themselves to thrive in a career. It could be um, for a whole multitude of other reasons. Also add that quite often people leave and come back or they, um, they, if they remain in the same industry, you know, so I've found myself moving around quite a lot. So I've worked in digital learning and then I qualified in HR to support that digital learning organization. Then I stayed within e-learning, but looked after teams look at, as a generalist HR person. And now I'm back in a large financial institution as a client to some of those organizations. So somehow that learning is still within the business, it's still within the industry, and it is worth uh, retaining those connections with people because as they grow and develop, then they could potentially bring stuff back to you. My last question to you is, what are the top tips or key takeaways for anyone watching today? I think for the business, the tip is uh, look at what's needed now, right now, in front of people. Uh, COVID has created a particular environment, but I don't think it's going away anytime soon. So these are not temporary measures you're putting in place. Um, do something about reassuring people and making sure that they've got the skills they need, particularly around resilience, to keep on keeping on delivering back to the business. it is about having that basket of skills look at the things you've done and extract the skills from that experience that you think will be useful going forward look at the skills that you've acquired and find the things that engage you and interest you and follow those things and almost effectively follow your heart if that doesn't sound a bit schmaltzy thank you very much Lee. it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on today this is locked in conversation See you next time.